What, what do you think the Prime Minister is going to do if he agrees that that arrangement is unbalanced? Well, then, you, then uh, we're having a negotiation with our uh, American friends um, on, a, on a trade deal, and I'm sure that's something that could be brought up along the side of that. Not at the same time, not conjoined, but um, at the same time whilst we're in the same room. Um, Harry Dunn happens to be, uh, would have been, his parents are Northamptonshire residents, na neighbouring constituency to mine. Um, never before in Northamptonshire have I seen uh, such a... Uh, a, a swell of, of sympathy for a family. Um, it, this is um, really big news in my neck of the woods, let alone on the international stage, and no one can quite understand the imbalance that has just been outlined in, in, in PMQs. Um, I, mean, I think if the family obviously feel very much that they have a, a burning injustice here and that they haven't been treated correctly by the minister that ought to be fighting their corner, I think that's also very serious. Chris, what do you say about the uh, behaviour and conduct of Dominic Raab? Well, I've, I've not seen what it's uh, what that's been behind the uh, behind doors, but in, 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 in the public face has been exemplary. I'd have said so. I'd be surprised if there was uh, an issue. But I, I, my heart goes out to the family. I mean, they, they've lost a son um, in quite unbelievable circumstances uh, and um, you, we want to as a government support that family as much as possible. But transparency is very important mm. and the claims echoed there by Jeremy Corbyn are that actually the, the Foreign Office have not been straight about the status of Anne Sekoulis. Now this follows the reports in the papers about her being a CIA operative and that is why in fact that extradition uh, requests have been turned down. Mm, but I, I think as the Prime Minister said in his answer that what we have been notified is that she was the spouse of someone working at the base. Yeah. Well, going by my inbox, my constituents completely get the difference between people who came to this country to work and make our country better and people, foreign national offenders, who, we, uh, who my constituents do not want to reside in the country. Tracy? Well, I would say that uh, when you've got uh, comments from Boris Johnson today saying we're going to look into limiting the powers of campaigners, um, to support these people who are bundled onto flights. I think that's really worrying as a step forward, that of course there's going to be differentials and nobody right. wants a, well, a, a, you know, somebody who's a, a, a risk to our society in our community if they don't belong here. But this is part of something wider, that somebody who came to this country mm. too, who has been brought up by the family of a Windrush uh, generation, sure. they have family of their own, we are denying those children a father. And it may have been a retros you know, when they were 17, one um, offence. This is really the wrong way to go about it. Should we and should Labour make the distinction between foreign-born offenders who are being deported? Um, not all of them, or maybe none of them, are also victims of the Windrush scandal. Well, the d devil is, of course, in the detail, and we do need to know who is, um, uh, you know, going to be a, a risk to our society and sure. who needs to actually, you know, if they live somewhere else, then they should go back there. But these are people who've never you even can't been say to those. Just but one offence. One offence could be a murder. Well, one offence could be, you know, of course. No, you're a misinterpreting what I'm saying. No, I, I'm saying. I think I got exactly as, what you were as, saying. No, as uh, Jeremy Corbyn said, one drugs offence when you're 17, and he made that equivalence. We, we know that Michael Gove has admitted using cocaine, and yet he's on the front benches. Um, I think we have to believe in rehabilitation, do we? Do we are, believe you, in rehabilitation? are you on the wrong side of public opinion here? Um, I very much doubt it. Tracy, are you? I would say we are a society with British values that we care about our, uh, our citizens and that a miscarriage of justice is a miscarriage of justice. Chris? Well, miscarriage of justice is a miscarriage of justice, but these are foreign national offenders who have, have been convicted of, of criminal offences of such a scale that we want them to leave the country. But then why not wait? Why not wait for lessons learned? Why now? Because this is not, we've been doing this for years. This is not, you know, this is, we're using a law that was brought in by, a Labour, by the Labour government back in you know, 2007, I think it was. This is a process that's been ongoing. All right, we're going to talk about transport because yesterday the big announcement was made on HS2 and uh, it was uh, not really a secret that it was going to get the go-ahead. You're the transport minister. Let's talk about some of the other things that were announced that we didn't mm -hmm. have a chance to talk about um, because there was a £5 billion announcement, new funding to overhaul bus and cycle links for every region outside of London over five years. That's hardly transformative, is it?
Well, I think you'll find it is transformative. I mean, five uh, billion over five years yeah, for yeah, every but, region outside but that's, London. That's on top of all, everything else that we are doing uh, uh, for our transport network. So, uh, in in cycling terms, that is absolutely transformative because we're able to. Um, we are spending more on cycling uh, uh, now than we ever done. But that's hundreds of miles of dedicated cycleways up and down uh, up and down the country. And yes, you can do an awful lot with. I mean, I've seen schemes where we just reintroduced or we have just spread the bikeability scheme. Cycling Cycling proficiency for people of my of my vintage um, to every school, uh, school child in the country, uh, and that's a scheme that's going to cost you know in the low mil tens of millions. So you can get proper value for money and transformative modal shift change by doing the right thing with this this money. I mean, Caroline, these will be the tangible things that people will be able to see. Obviously, years ahead of HS2, for example, will this go down well? Well, it's interesting. I was talking to a Metro Mayor yesterday. He wasn't exactly supportive of HS2 because it a takes too long and b doesn't necessarily deliver the transport benefits to his region. But he was very supportive and said actually some of these changes that were going to come on stream a lot sooner than the results of HS2 were going to be massively welcome including the uplift uh, around buses because in certain parts of the country I mean I know we have a fantastic tube network in London you know this is the absolute you know lifeblood for those communities and actually it will make a tangible difference to them. Sienna? I mean it's absolutely crucial I'm, we can remember that Jeremy Corbyn dedicated a whole PMQs <laughs> to buses and local bus services because that's what people talk so about. So you're pleased then with the announcement? Well, yeah, but let's actually look at whether there are some structural problems that need solving as well because Labour was talking about locally run bus companies, for instance, in the 2019 election and maybe those kind of things need to be considered as well as just pouring funding yeah, into Yeah, but you don't it. want to stifle innovation at the same time. I'm, I'm not the bus minister, but I'm a bit of a bus geek. I apologise. Um, and, 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 you know, you can have demand responsive services uh, and they can be run uh, uh, much uh, much more local by non-for-profit organizations we, you know you can stimulate a whole new bus economy with the with the money that we're talking about that was announced yesterday are you supportive well I'm I love buses and I think buses could regenerate my own community um, I've just brought my uncle on a 43 bus so at the moment <laughs> Um, but what is really important is actually the detail because there are um, routes that are going to have more buses and more mm. efficiency. But those routes, I would I would suggest, are uh, routes from towns to cities, commuter routes. What's really really important for communities like mine is inter inter uh, village mm. and town routes where they're not actually cost necessarily cost effective. They don't make a massive profit. We have to put um, uh, the people before the profit, and we have to. That's what we, I think you were saying about that shift in why are we doing it and the Labour Party was saying in our manifesto 3,000 more bus routes to support that economy. Chris? No, we, I, I, I generally don't disagree. We want modal shift. If we're going to achieve our environmental targets, we need more people to use public transport. Right, well, you've talked about the environment. The government says it's committed to uh, obviously hitting zero net carbon emissions by 2050. He was asked a question about Heathrow expansion, the third runway, the Prime Minister this is, yeah. yesterday. And he said of a third runway, I see no bulldozers at present nor any immediate prospect of them arriving um, as I remember um, it was voted through by Parliament what did he mean well I think he meant there are no bulldozers on the site at the moment it's a, just a description of what's going on currently there's a there's a judicial process going on there's a whole host of environmental processes going on and um, as far as I'm aware this is moving forward right so and yet without being too rude you politicians have not come up with a solution or agreed a system that would provide some certainty why not well um, firstly yeah that is a heartbreaking story and um, amazingly powerful I, I was a member of the European Parliament and uh, for 10 years and whilst I was out there there were a number of debates about adult social care across Europe and there are I think there are pretty much 27 28 different schemes uh, for 20 28 different countries and um, and no one's got it right uh, the demands this is this is a challenge that is way beyond our, a, a generational challenge for politicians we are trying to fund social, adult social care uh, differently there's top-ups on council tax uh, bills now and uh, but we do need to come together and actually work out what the proper solution for our country and its growing needs are.